Hello and welcome to CPH Session 19, Inferential Statistics, Making Comparisons and Conclusions from Data. This is Part G, comparing means between two unrelated groups, the two-sample independent t-test, and more. In this part, we'll learn when it's appropriate to use the independent two-sample t-test. We'll go through the process of computing a t-statistic and getting a resulting p-value. And finally, I'll show you what to do if your sample is small or if you're trying to compare more than two groups. So coming back to our three types of t-tests, we're now examining the third of the three, the two-sample independent t-test. Generally, uh, an independent two-sample t-test is for situations in which you're comparing the same variable measured in two different groups. Because we're grouping samples into two different groups, there's usually some categorical variable to do that. So for example, we might be measuring blood pressure like in the, the last example, but now we have a second variable, sex, that separates the participants into two groups, male and female. When we look at dependent t-tests, we look at differences between pairs of scores because the scores came from the same participants, so the difference in the scores should reflect only the effect of the experimental manipulation. So in the last examples, that would be starting oral contraception for three months. However, in independent t-tests, we're introducing more factors and more differences between the two groups. The two groups might have other sources of vari variance, uh, such as different IQ levels, different exercise habits, and so on. And the independent t-test requires two additional assumptions in addition to the basic assumptions that we already talked about that apply to all t-tests. Uh, first, we have to assume that the variances in our two sample groups are roughly equal. And we can quantify that using something called Levine's test. The second assumption for independent t-tests is that we have to assume that the data in our two groups are independent from another, and generally this means that the groups are mutually exclusive. Okay, so let's do it. Um, we're going to calculate our t-statistic, and this time to do it, we need the mean scores from both our sample data sets. So we need to calculate the, the mean from our first group and the mean from our second group. And we also need to calculate the standard error, which means we need the standard deviation separately of each of our two groups. We don't need to assemble a new data set of differences like we did in the dependent t-test. And I won't go through an example showing you. I think at this point, if you can uh, follow along with the dependent example, and if I haven't lost it yet, then probably you should be able to work through an example of this on your own. And so like I said, this part G, is the independent t-test and more. So here's the more. Imagine a situation in which your samples are small and they aren't normally distributed. Well, then we can't use the t-test. We haven't met those required assumptions. Or imagine a situation when you want to compare more than two groups. Again, the t-tests aren't built for that. But you don't have to have any worries because we can still make comparisons. If your data aren't normally distributed, then you can use the Man Whitney Rank Sum test. This test is a non parametric test. And so, if you remember, that means it isn't built on the underlying assumption that your data are normally distributed. That means it's applicable to a wider range of situations. In this test, it actually computes the average rank rather than a mean and a standard deviation between the two groups. Um, and again, because it is non parametric, it means we can apply it to both the normally and the non-normally distributed data. And uh, lastly, like I said, if you want to compare three or more independent data sets, if you want to comp compare the means between uh, the same variable among three different and independent data sets or groups, then we can use what's called the one-way ANOVA test with analysis of variance. This test is a parametric test, so it has all the same required assumptions that you would see in the independent two-sample t-test. And in that case, what we do uh, is we get our output test statistic. In this case, is F, 
rather than T. All right, so at this point, you should be ready to do questions four and five on your inferential statistics practice worksheet in part H. I'll give you the last two statistical tests that you can use uh, for comparing binary data.